Okay, so electric cars and stupid battery leases. So I should say, first of all, that um, no electric car on sale today, um, new, will come with a battery lease. Okay, so it's not a feature on brand new cars. Um, it was in existence on Nissan Leafs for a short period of time. It was called Flex when Nissan did it, but they kind of quickly ended it and kind of all these vehicles have I think pretty much disappeared now it's pretty rare to find a leaf uh, with a what they call flex which is the battery lease uh, maybe on a very old one but I'd be surprised it's mainly a feature on Renault Zoe's and um, it was only available on the Zoe like this one um, so up to 2019 so we're talking ZE22, ZE40 if you're familiar with the Zoe models but 2020 onwards on a Zoe it doesn't exist so it's up to 2019 Renault Zoe's basically so when you bought the car from the dealership, you could buy the battery, so you owned the entire car. You could obviously do lease deals and HB and whatever, all those normal stuff, but in terms of differences with the battery lease, so you could buy the whole car, or you could buy the car but lease the battery. So it's basically just a monthly rental um, where you pay a monthly fee to Renault Finance, who are now called Mobilize, and you basically have to sign a battery lease agreement now um i've got some excerpts i'm going to show you in a second um so i pay a monthly battery lease on this car bought it off a customer needs some work doing on it it's actually got two faults and there's another fault i wasn't aware of and i'm kind of the the motor fault that it's got it's going to take 15 hours to fix but i don't want to do all that work and find out it's got another fault which is going to be really onerous or difficult to fix and i'm kind of stuck with it having done all the work so i haven't fixed it yet and i've been kind of busy doing other jobs so that's fine but i may fix this car but there's quite a few other people who are saying to me oh i've got this faulty car with a battery lease do you want it like do you want it for free and i'm sort of like well maybe but at some point my luck's going to run out and there's going to be a part i can't get or a car's got such a major fault and i'm going to need to get out of the battery lease so i'm investigating kind of using this car as a test bed what does it cost to get out of the battery lease i've heard different things and it's a long time since i've looked into it so um yeah find out on this one before i do the work on it see what the options are and yeah there might be some there might be some fun we can have as well and maybe open up some new options uh, maybe involving some court action but we'll kind of get onto that so what does the lease actually say in writing so you fill in this lease this has got all my details on the top um but this is the bottom of it and it says there's a minimum period of hire so when you sign up for the lease you say i'll have it one two or three years I always pick one because it's a minimum um and after that you can give them one month's written notice okay so that's all that says okay fine so then later in the agreement the agreement's like 20 odd pages long I printed out the relevant sections. Uh, so there, I'll just put it down here so it's easier to read. Apologies. Uh, you may terminate this agreement by giving us one month's written notice not to expire before the end of the minimum period. So if you choose a year, you can actually give them notice and it says you can pay up the year anyway. So you pay usually around about £50 a month. When I took this one over, it, it, it set up at £37.50 a month, which is really odd. But it's normally about £50 a month for a ZD22 and £60 a month for a um, ZD40. If you tell them you're going to do more miles, they try and charge you a bit more. But I always just set this to the minimum mileage. Anyway, um, so it says in here, because this section is all about ending the agreement. Um, bah, 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 and this clause 14 or 17, this is either like you haven't paid or you choose to give it back basically so i'll be responsible when trying to end the lease for any battery removal or battery restocking fees including that incurred to us okay so what's that all about so i rang um mobilize as they're now called and said right i want to give you one month's notice oh yes she said i can accept that what do we need to do well she said you need to contact a local um zd ev trained Renault dealership um, and they will arrange the battery return for you. Oh, sounds quite simple. So I said, what might that cost? Well, she said they'd have to give you a um, quote themselves, but likely cost to remove the battery will be £450. Then there's a transport cost um, to send it back to France. 
And she said, um, uh, from other people I've spoken to, what they've said is it ends up being about £1,400. And I said to her, well, I didn't pick up the battery from France. And that lease agreement, which I've just read, which is blown off the car, says you're responsible for um, removal and restocking. I said, it doesn't say anything about transport. So I kind of said, I think you're stretching this a bit. Obviously, the person you're speaking to is not the person who makes the decisions. They're just saying what they've told, what they've been told. And she said, well, this is, you know, this is just the information I've got. Um... And I obviously said to her, I didn't pick it up from France. I'm returning it back to the place, you know, where I picked it up from. If you hire a car, they don't say, oh, sorry, sir, you've got to take it back to Edinburgh. Um, and you picked it up in South End. Um, so I consider that to be really stretching the agreement to be sort of them um, applying onerous terms to make the end difficult and obviously applying fees which are not laid out in that agreement there's a whole section on if you miss a payment we'll send you a letter and that's 12 pounds if you bounce a dd that's 25 pound bank charge all of that's laid out but in terms of ending the lease it's not basically um so you have to do it through our ev train dealership i asked her where they were she wasn't sure um she said oh you can filter on the website that filter doesn't exist so um, I sort of said to her, well, I need to return it to a place, but we're not sure where. Um, and I need to pay them some money, but I'm not sure, we're not sure how much. Um, you know, is that correct? And she was like, um, yeah. It, it, the really annoying thing about this lease is that it's not been thought through. They just chucked it together. Um, and this agreement appears to just enable them to bung any fees they want on the end of that. And I think that's completely wrong. Okay. Now, there is an option to buy the battery. So this is a 2016 car. We've just got into 2025, but um, the buyout price, what they consider to be the value of the battery, goes down by 10% of its current value a year, roughly. Um, and the buyout of this would be just over £2,000. £2,053.20p, she advised. So you have that option. You can buy the battery off them. But on the open market, that battery is worth about 500 quid, basically. So you can pay four times the value. You can lose about 1,500 quid. And for what people have said, it's going to cost about 1,400 to give the battery back. But I think that's utterly ridiculous. And I think that's basically holding people to ransom because... These, these fees are not explained in the agreement and I don't think that's enforceable so I've got their address um, which I wanted and um, I'm very tempted to just take the battery out and just take it to a dealership and put it out the front and say there you are um, or just transport the car put it in front of the dealership and say well I've returned it you know the car was collected from a Renault dealership it's been returned to a Renault dealership so it's you know in effect it's been returned from the place it was picked up from which if you're going to rent something that sounds quite reasonable and then you give them their one month's notice in writing and you say well I want to end the agreement I've returned it what you know if you want to ship it back to Timbuktu that's nothing to do with me and um, the lady explained that oh it has to go back to France or well, I think it's Paris sort of thing well it's like well yeah, you can ship it wherever you like but the agreement doesn't say shipping costs. It doesn't say restocking fees, but it seems a bit of a stretch to ship it to another country and charge the person who's trying to get out of a rental agreement when they've taken it back to the place they got it from. I don't know if this... It'd be interesting to know, actually, if anyone else is elsewhere in Europe, because if you're in, like, Sweden or Denmark, was there a battery lease? Do you have to pay for it to be shipped back to France? I mean, it seems a bit far-fetched. Um, so we've got a couple of options here. I spoke to a, de a dealer, rang up a dealer, um, a really annoying dealer group in my area when you ring the local number um you get put through to a central dealership a central call center um and then they're like oh what what dealer did you want and you're thinking well i called the local number but um yeah so that's annoying but when you finally get through to the dealership and you explain it to them obviously they've got absolutely no idea what you're talking about they just want to like book you in for a service or whatever um and the lady who was on service spoke to her manager and then put me through to the parts department. <laughs> um, that was just a whim. Even the guy said, I think that was a bit of a punt because I don't know anything about this. And I sort of felt a bit sorry for him. But he took my number and he said he'd call me back. So we'll see about that. Um, as you can see, this car's not in a great condition as well. So if I was to fix it, I kind of would need to do various things to it. It's got that on the side of that trim falling apart, you know. So even mechanically fixed, it's still going to be untidy and need quite a lot of work. You know, it's all just generally a bit scratched and a bit rough and things. So, yeah, this car may get fixed, but there'll be another one that doesn't. And it, I don't know whether I'm happy continuing to take on cars with battery leases without knowing how you get out of it. 
So, um, yeah, so we've talked about you can buy it out. Well, that's £2,000. We're not going to do that. Um, you can pay them to take it out. Well, we're not going to do that. Oh, wait, because that's 1400 and I think that's imposing onerous terms. The other option, which I think is worth exploring, is to start a, a small claims court claim for the buyout. Um, so the £2,053.20p. So what we could do is start a small claims action and then... Um, you know, we put on it that they're imposing onerous terms, effectively won't accept the battery back. We could even just park the car outside the dealership just to prove that we've returned the goods, take photos of it, put that on all the court claim, um, or evidence of a conversation that says, I'm happy to return it, where do you want it? Where do you want the car? I'll take the battery out. Where do you want the battery? You know, I'll take the battery out and send it back to them, take it back on a trailer, whatever, it's not really a problem. I'm returning the goods as far as I'm concerned. Um, so we can say in the in the court claim that we're happy to return the battery. We've attempted to return it, but they're refusing to accept it unless we pay them a fee. This fee was not disclosed in the agreement. It just says about removal and restocking. Even the 450 is probably not that bad. You know, you'd accept that and maybe 50 quid towards transport. You know, if you're getting about five, 600 quid, you'd think, well, that's annoying, but fine, whatever, get on with it. But when they're trying to charge you like fourteen hundred, if that's and that several people have given me that fourteen hundred figure, so I do believe that. But I'll see what happens when the parts go. Works out how it works. And I think that's I think that's unreasonable, and I don't think that's enforceable. I think that's I think that's really sort of onerous terms or unenforceable terms. So we will see if you've had an um, experience of this battery lease um, and how to you know, how it's ended, how to get out of it. Um, I suspect if I park the car outside a dealership and give them the keys um, and then submit my one month's notice, I, I would expect them to, to then cancel the agreement. Some people have suggested cancelling the DD, um, but I think you're in slightly shaky grounds because even if you're within your rights to do that, you're just going to trash your credit rating. So I wouldn't do that. Um, I had an interesting case a while ago where um, I got a Zoe 22 bought it off a guy who ran an accountancy company he was kind of retiring it was his car but he had a few problems with it and he got fed up with paying until it fixed so i took over the car um and i filled in the lease paperwork i didn't really chase it up but i fixed it within a couple of months and sort of tested it drove it around it was fine and basically sold the car um so the patch release hadn't actually been transferred into my name it was in the business's name his accountancy company and you can have the lease in either a personal or a business name which is interesting so it was in a business name. Um, I submitted the paperwork, but they never got back to me because they're horrendously slow. They've got a bit quicker, actually, I have to say, but it used to be really, really slow a couple of years ago or up to about probably a year ago. So they never got back to me. I got the buyer, who was just a local chap, really nice guy, and he was happy to sort of, you know, fill in the paperwork and wait for the car and all that, fine. Sent it in his name, but they came back to me and said they can't accept the paperwork from me because I'm not the registered leaseholder. So they have this kind of protection where unless you're the person named on it, so the lease wasn't in the name of Mr. Gary, it was in the, in the name of Mr. Fred, whatever, um, they said, oh, you're not Mr. Fred, so we can't accept it from you. And I sort of went back, um, and at this point, the guy, he did, the previous owner did um, contact me and say, what's happening with the lease? But he was basically winding up his accountancy company. So he was like, well, I'm not really that bothered anyway, because I'm just going to close the company. So I don't care if the company gets a bad company credit rating. You know, he was an accountant, he... You know, he was happy with all the, the sort of um, financial ins and outs. Um, so he just kind of wondered what was going on. And I said, well, I'm trying to transfer it. The buyer's happy to take it on, but they won't transfer it. And in the end, I said to the finance company, to RCI, now Mobilize, um, I said, well, I've submitted the paperwork. The fact that it's not in my name is your fault because you haven't processed it. So, and I said, the person, the current leaseholder doesn't care. He's going to close his company. So we're not going to do anything. You've had all the paperwork you need. The fact that you haven't done it is is not our fault. And if you want someone to pay it, post when this guy closes his company, then you need to process all the paperwork. <laughs> and kind of amusing thing happened. A couple of days later, I got a load of paperwork in my name and then my buyer got a load of paperwork. So obviously what they'd done is dig out the old application form that I'd filled in um, from a couple of months prior, process it so that it then kind of started the process of going into my name so that they could then transfer it into the buyer's name i mean just completely farcical 
And I have to say, one of the biggest issues with these leases is when you come to sell the car, there's an application form. So those excerpts I've been showing are from the full lease agreement. Now the process to transfer the leases, there's an application form. So it's different if you're private or sole trader, um, one for private and sole trader and one for business. Okay, so you fill in the form with either your details, sole trader details or personal details or business details on the other form. So you fill in that application form, obviously vehicle details, bank details, stuff like that. You send it in and then at some point in the near or distant future, you get um, an agreement, which is that thing that I've been showing, with all your details on, with a couple of places to sign. And you have to sign and return that with a copy of driving license to prove your signature. And it's not until they then come back on effectively like that second application that it's actually transferred. And the real difficulty when it comes to selling a battery lease car, which I've done multiple times, is that you say to the person, well, technically I'm not supposed to hand this car over until you've got the second lot of paperwork um, you know, having filled in the form, sent that off, then received the full agreement, and they do like a credit check and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but, you know, to be honest, usually I just let people fill the form in and take the car away, because who's going to buy a car? Like, yeah, I'll buy the car, yeah, brilliant, here's the money, shake your hand. All right, well, that's brilliant, but you can't take it away now. What do you mean? Well, here's the battery release form, but we need to send that in, then you'll get the full agreement, and then, you know, just completely rid it. So I've basically, in the past, taken it on faith, and what I've actually done... On the last one, I was a little bit concerned. I basically retained the spare key. Um, and I said to them, you know, it, it's in my name. It needs to be transferred. It was kind of a local person. So, I didn't, you know, sort of, it's difficult to know what to do. You know, if you've been through that as well, let me know. Because that was the only thing I could think of. Um, but I said, I'm going to retain the spare key. And at the point the lease is transferred, and I get my letter which says I'm not the current leaseholder, I'll post you the key. And they were happy with that. And I thought, OK, well, they're probably not trying to scam me then. But, you know, the car could disappear. Who knows? And I'm still liable until someone else takes it over or I'm liable for the buyout. And that was a 2018 car I was selling. So, you know, it'd probably be about £4,000. So it's very difficult to know what to do. It's a really onerous process. And I, um, as a last story... I know someone who traded in a Zoe to a used car dealership to get a new one. Told them all about the paperwork. Yeah, yeah, we'll fill that in, no problem. But they didn't fill it in, obviously. They were relying on their buyer to fill it in. They didn't seem to bother. So for months, someone's paying a battery lease for a car they don't have. And the agreement says you're responsible for transferring it. And if you don't, you still have to pay it. Then what do you do? You buy it out? But then someone's got a battery-owned car um, that, that is not, you know, that, that you've just paid for, um, or you keep paying, in this case, 3750 forever? I mean, it's just insane, isn't it? Absolutely insane. So, it's difficult to know what to do sometimes. Yeah, let me know if you've had experience of this. Let me know what you think I should do. I will um, get the full cost from the dealership, and I'll come back with a part two and see what we're going to do next. But I think raising a small claims court, I've basically got nothing to lose. It costs 50 quid to raise it. Um, and what we can put on the claim is, is I want to, they're not accepting the battery being returned, so I'm claiming the buyout price. So effectively, I'm claiming the 2053 from them, which I will then instantly pay back to them to buy out the lease. So I'm effectively using this claim to get out of the lease process. Um, and they could end the claim by just ending the lease if they so chose to. Um, just do a sort of wooden dollars internally or whatever and end it. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. It'd be more fun doing the court thing, wouldn't it? But yeah, it only costs 50 quid to do a small claims court. I think that's still only 50 quid at two grand. But I will double check that. But let me know what you think, what I should do, what experience you've had. Um, and thank you very much for watching. And obviously be very careful if you're going to buy a car, do a HPI check because of Renault Zoe in particular, because they're the only ones with battery leases now, because the a battery lease agreement will show up on a HPI check. It shows up as a finance agreement. Okay, so if the car says it's got outstanding finance, the person you're talking to does not own the battery. Should also add, um, if, they, if you stop paying the lease on a Zoe, they do reserve the right to prevent the vehicle from charging via the telematics. Okay, so they do have an option to sort of send a signal to the car um, and disable charging. That is, of course, provided that the telematics still works.
Um, so yeah, I'll just leave that there. Um, yeah, so I have to say on my other car, and that blue Zoe over there, that one, um, the telematics, seem to have stopped working, which is really weird. Strange. All right, cool. Hope that's interesting, and I'll catch you later. Thank you for watching.